part of the Polar Trek program, I spent the month of June 2013 at Tulik Field Station, 150 miles north of the Arctic Circle on Alaska's North Slope. I worked with a team of scientists from the University of Alaska to study the circadian rhythms of Arctic ground squirrels. The scientists on Team Squirrel were kind enough to allow me to record them introducing themselves and sharing words of wisdom for the 5th and 6th grade students at Jeep's West Intermediate School. Well, let's meet the scientists. My name is Lauren Buck. I'm a professor of biological sciences at the University of Alaska Anchorage. And at the University of Alaska Anchorage, I teach classes and have the opportunity to research in neat places like this. Right now, we're at Tulik Lake Field Station on the North Slope of Alaska, and we're doing circadian rhythms research. So we're trying to understand how it is animals maintain a regular rhythm of activity, feeding, and sleep across the polar day. The polar day being the time of year when the sun neither sets nor rises, but stays above the horizon for a, a long period of time. Sure, I'm Brian Barnes. I'm a professor at the University of Alaska, and I also am what's called director of the Institute of Arctic Biology. And I work up here at the Tulik Field Station with Team Squirrel. I'm uh, Corey Williams, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Alaska Anchorage. And I do uh, research on Arctic ground squirrels. In the summer, I spend a lot of time out in the field, catching squirrels, doing experiments. In the winter, uh, I spend a lot of time in the lab and in um, working at a computer. My name is Jeanette Moore, and I'm a research professional with, with uh, the Barnes Buck Group, um, and I study Arctic ground squirrels. Uh, I do many different things, and my main job is to support and uh, make sure that all the scientists within our group have what they need to get the science done. Buy carrots for the squirrels, or or make up chemical solutions or um, work on a database, many different things. Well, clearly coming to Tulik. So Tulik's way high north. We're 130 miles from the Arctic Ocean. Lots of people come here with all kinds of different interests. Ours on the squirrels are, are just one of maybe a hundred different projects on plants and birds and fishes and insects. So my favorite part is meeting all the people who are interested, like we are, in Arctic biology. I think it's just the fact that it's so variable uh, from you know one year to the next. You know, one year I can be working on squirrels, another year I might be doing something on seabirds. And so I get to ask really different questions about really different animals and come up with different ways to answer those questions. I really like challenges. I like trying to uh, get a job done and make sure it's complete. And so it's really fulfilling to be able to work with other people and make sure that you know everyone works pulls together and gets the job done. I think being a scientist is a wonderful way to remain a kid. So you know how little kids when you're around them are always asking questions. What's that? What's that? Where's that? All of those sorts of questions. As a scientist, that's what we do. And then we are also given the resources to go and solve these problems and these questions ourselves. So we're always in a position to be asking and answering questions. And to me, I find that very, very satisfying. Um, I initially went into science because I really like puzzles. I and I also really love animals too. I thought I wanted to work with animals, but more I, I realize now it's the puzzle aspect that really keeps me hooked. Well, for me, I was really interested in wildlife, um, just from, you know, hiking and those sorts of things. And so I had a real curiosity, curiosity about how the, the natural world worked, and so that's sort of what drove me into the sciences. Well, i got to say that it had a lot to do with my family. I'm, I'm the youngest of four kids. My dad was a professor. Uh, an entomologist studied insects, and my big brothers all had uh, pet rats and birds and lizards and snakes. I grew up in 
in the desert in Southern California. So, geez, as a, as a kid, everyone I met was uh, a scientist of some type or a professor. It seemed like a good life, you know? You got to do what you wanted to do, which means you get to want to work really hard and all the time, <laughs> but, but that's okay. Um, you get to be around um, students, which turns out to be more and more fun as you get older. You know, there's always, in this case, you know, 18-year-olds coming to class, and, and, and that's neat. And uh, you get to travel the world. Uh, you get to have colleagues and friends from every country. Go to South America, like Lauren did. Or we uh, lived in in Norway, doing research on uh, birds of Norway for for a year. That kind of thing. It's a good life. Well, I think the important thing, uh, no matter what you go into, is to find you know what aspect of it uh, is interesting to you, and to really think about asking questions. Um, but you also need to work hard in school and get good grades to uh, get into science. When I was in fifth grade, someone told me that everyone's a genius, only in different subjects. And I didn't understand that at the time, but now I realize that Everyone has their own special skill that they're really, really good at. And when you do something you're really good at, it makes you feel good, and it's sort of a fulfilling thing to do. So it doesn't matter what it is, whether you're, you're a scientist, or you bust tables, or you wash cars. As long as whatever it is that you do, you really enjoy. And you'll find, you just have to take advantage of opportunities and find that special skill. I guess I think about me. I. I wanted to go into science. I knew when I was very young. I, I really enjoyed science. And the thing that I did as a young person was I paid attention to the world around me. And I really watched things. I tried to be observant and to learn things and ask questions. And then also go to books to try and find answers to those questions. And watch television programs on different systems that I was interested in, in Africa and Alaska, believe it or not. Well, study hard. <laughs> Take the hard courses, you know. Uh, science does require um, learning a lot of what's been learned. And every year there's so much more being discovered by other scientists. It's not that hard. It's just it's a matter of uh, working hard. Everybody has to do that. And be curious. I mean, uh, as a biologist, uh, I'm motivated by trying to figure out what's going on with animals and plants uh, that I see outside. You know, why is a uh, flower pink instead of yellow or white instead of orange? You know, what, why do a lot of insects look like you? each other, but they're different species, they're mimics and things like that. Why do birds sing? Why do lizards do push-ups? Uh, why do ground squirrels say Chick -chick? So things like that, you know, look, look at the natural world and ask questions and then try to pose answers to your questions and then try to figure out, well, how could you tell whether your answer was right or wrong? That's what we do every day.